Tokozani, Tokozani, Bagwantu, Tokozani. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, first off, I'd like to give a huge thank you. I want to thank everybody who has subscribed on YouTube. You will not believe, but in one week, we have 2,000 plus new followers. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. Uh, one of the reasons that I've decided to grow YouTube more than any other platform is because YouTube pays and I am writing a book that is almost complete on ancestral uh, veneration, African spirituality in order to assist those who need the help. Uh, for years now, I've been doing content that isn't even monetized. None of my platforms are monetized, but YouTube does have a built-in system where because of the ads, uh, we get some shmane, we get, we get the money we need. Unfortunately, it is the energy that we need to get things done. So I'd like to thank all the new subscribers on YouTube. I would actually also like to thank all my old subscribers on YouTube. I have never actually said thank you, but I want to say thank you. Asante sana. Siabonga kialeboha. Tinopakutenda. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate you guys so much. So, you know, <laughs> we're chasing 5K in less than a week. That for me is absolutely phenomenal. And I'm really, really grateful for you guys for showing up in the way that you have. I'm also grateful that you are open and willing to learn about us, about who we are, about where we come from, to learn the different aspects of our history that has been lost to us and that was literally, literally, literally hidden from us, whitewashed, distorted, and plagiarized, basically, uh, leaving us feeling as though we are a nothing people and a nobody sort of people. Well, we know different now. And part of my purpose, part of my calling in life has been to teach. And so your comments, your responses really validate my purpose and my calling. And for that, I'm really grateful. And I'm saying this, this is going to go up on YouTube, but on all my platforms, really, whoever sees this, I want to say thank you to each and every one of you for your support. It makes my work easier. I would still have to do it anyway because it's a calling. I don't have much of a choice, but for the fact that I am making a difference, that means everything to me. Um, there is no greater gift for anyone who's a healer or a teacher or whatever it is, whatever profession you're in, to see that you're actually making a difference. So for that reason, I want to say a big thank you to you all. So what do I want us to delve into today? A hello from the other side. Did we all make it to the other side? <laughs> First, I'd just like to say, you know, there was so much hype around the eclipse. I'm laughing because I wonder how many people actually thought they would wake up the next day and the world would be in technicolor and neon lights. How many? Come on, own up. The thing is, um, family, it's really about that energetic shift, right? And many of us feel it. Many of us are, you know, we are on the other side. Now, what does this look like for those who may feel like, I don't know what the other side is, and I don't know if I'm on the other side or not. Well, it's simple, really. I think that it's important to understand that while your spirit is still connected to your body, you can still do the work that you need to do to get to where you need to get to. Remember that this shift that happened is not a sudden revolutionary shift and therefore people are left behind. It is a gradual, it means basically we're moving in one direction and there's no turning back. And so for those of you who might have felt discouraged with my, I don't know, I've been telling you this, you didn't do it. I've been telling you that, you should have done it. For those of you who are feeling discouraged, please don't feel discouraged. I'm still going to be here teaching you. I am still going to be here. But what I won't be doing is spoon feeding and hand holding. 
And one thing that I'm not going to tolerate on any of my platforms is literally negative speak. I'm not going to tolerate whining. I'm not going to tolerate negative energy because believe it or not, negative energy, even on social media platforms spreads. We're not going to do that. I'm happy to help whoever needs help, but I won't. What I won't do is I'm not going to be there to keep you stuck in your misery. This isn't the time for misery. This is an amazing time for love. Remember, 2024. Number eight is abundance. We are in a time of abundance. And now I want to delve into our topic because it really has a lot to do with abundance. And I want to talk about this season of our set that we're in. There may be many of you who are like, well, you know, we're in the Northern Hemisphere. So how do we align with the Southern African calendar like or, or on the African calendar? Well, the truth of the matter is this. What we do in terms of aligning with the calendar really has to do with us as a collective. For example, family, the Chinese in Africa, the Chinese in Europe, the Chinese in America, when it is Chinese New Year, what do they do? They are celebrating their New Year. What does that mean? It means that the Chinese at a specific appointed time in their home country in China will join in wherever they are in the world to do what? To uplift and align with the energies of their culture. This is what it means to align yourself as umuntu, as a melanated being with the African calendar, right? So I'll give you an example with myself. I'm talking a lot about the season of our set because that is the season that I choose. It's a choice to align with because... All my patlas, all my devotions, all my rituals align with the energies of where I come from, meaning I deplete my energy towards home and our efforts as a collective of Bagwantu, as opposed to putting my energies towards those of the Northern Hemisphere who have done us no good. That's really where this is at. So it's a choice for me to take my energy and to use it for the collective of Abandu throughout the world. And we as Abandu throughout the world have a home, just like the Chinese throughout the world have a home. And they align with their calendar and celebrate their festivals and do their rituals wherever they are in the world. This is what Bagwantu ought to be doing for themselves, aligning with our home calendar so that everything that we want as a collective of Abantu throughout the world can happen. But as long as our energies are scattered between the Gregorian calendar, between, say, some of you who say are Buddhists with that Tibetan or the Mayan calendar or the, the Hindu calendar, we are the only people on this planet who literally choose to align ourselves with the energies of people who want nothing to do with us. Make me understand. Help me understand. Is our self-hate so big that we would quite happily abandon our own and scatter our energies? Because we're scattered amongst all these other uh, religions and all these other cultural uh, bases that aren't ours, we can never pull our energies together as a collective for one common purpose. There are many things that we as Abantu need. We need our land back. We need reparations. All across the world, Bawandu are oppressed. And the reason is simple. Because we don't unite around one common purpose and one common goal. And yet we are the most powerful people spiritually in the world. So I want you to think about that a little bit. As we delve into why your manifestations are not working. Now, maybe I should start at the beginning and just define what manifestation really means. Ubab Credo Mutwa, if you don't know Baba Credo Mutwa, his uh, phenomenal uh, wisdom that he left us in his book, Indaba, My Children, you need to get that. 
I'm quite happy to give people a free PDF. All you need to do is a DM me. I will make sure that I have my number or write it on the comment under this video and uh, I'll put my number so you guys can WhatsApp me and I can send you the PDF uh, of this book because it really does give us a firm foundation in terms of who we are and who we are and our place in the world, right? So Baba Credo talks about how Bagwantu pray. Remember, the word pray in English means to plead or to beg. But Bagwantu, we do not plead or beg. We do not plead or beg for what the universe has already given us freely, which is abundance. Are you hearing me? Therefore, what the other uh, palm-colored creatures would call manifestation, we, for lack of a better term in English, would call it praying. And what Baba Credo describes very detailed is the process of manifestation, which is this. You come before your ancestors and the universal energies. And in their presence, you picture in detail the thing that you want. You allow yourself to feel the emotions that having this that you want would invoke. Ubabu Credo goes further to say, the minute you think it and you feel the emotions associated with it, you've already created it in the spiritual realm. It exists. The only thing that's left now is for it to manifest in the physical. Does that make sense? So basically that is it. When somebody, you see, when people are kneeling down to say to an external God or entity, oh, please, can you give me this? Oh, Father, I ask you in the name of whoever, please, can you give me this? That's not us. We don't do that because that doesn't work. <laughs> please i'm not making fun of those who believe in any kind of religious persuasion where you're bowing down on your knees and you're putting your head to the ground and you're begging if that's working for you have at it but i can tell you consistently that doesn't work i know people who've done that sort of pleading for 15 years and nothing worked and then they started to do it there Bagwantu way, the way we connect with the universe, because that's all we're doing, is connecting our higher self with the universe, with the frequency of the thing that we want, by envisioning it, by desiring it, by feeling the joy. And then every time you think of this thing, you're feeling this amazing joy. The more joy you feel, the higher you vibrate. The higher you vibrate, the closer you get to the frequency of the thing you want. And before you know it, boom, this thing appears in the physical. It's called Heka right? In Medi nature, it is called Heka. Heka meaning magic. Why is it called magic? Because it literally is our ancestors lived a life of magic, a life of manifestation. Now, I want to talk to you guys about the things that could make your manifestations difficult, even in this time of our set who is the master magician. She is the mistress of Heka. She is the one who makes things happen for us. We are in the womb right now. We are in deep in her womb where really all we ought to be doing because it's winter is manifestation work. In other words, if you want to use that P word, fine, but we, we, don't, we, we, don't, we don't pray because we don't beg right? We imagine and we desire and we are happy and we wait with expectation. That's it. <laughs> it sounds too simple for people who have come out of a system that is so complicated in its uselessness, right? I mean, think about it. How about those with the rosaries? Do 10 rosaries, meaning 50 different, 50 times the same thing over and over again, and still nothing happens. And who are you talking to? 
With manifestation, like I said, it's in the presence of those universal principles. It's in the presence of your ancestors who are part of you. Those universal principles are a part of you. So who are you talking to? What is the most important conversation you're having at that time? It is the conversation with your soul, the conversation with your God self, the conversation with your higher self. That's how simple that is. But for some, hmm, it sounds too simple to be true, right? So here are some reasons why your manifestation work, the steps I have shared with you, aren't working. It's not happening. Number one, you're not taking action. You're not taking action. Now, I've said during the season of our set, you're really not supposed to be taking much action. You are supposed to be actively envisioning, actively emoting. What does taking action in the actual season of inaction look like? It looks like this. Say you have a car that you want. Say you've got this beautiful SUV that you want. You have to go to a dealership, test drive an SUV, the one that you want. Sit in that SUV and allow the emotions to come over you. Does this make sense? That is the kind of taking action we're talking about. You want to start a perfume business. Go to one of these shops that sells perfumes. Walk around there. Look at the branding. Look, smell the different fragrances. Look at how the setups are. L look at how the place is decorated. Walk through there. Feel the emotions of what it is to own such a place or to run such a business. Does this make sense? So whatever it is that you're manifesting, a new home, it, you don't have to pay to call up a realtor to go and see some homes. Go online, look at some beautiful homes. You're taking action, right? You're not just sitting there going, oh my God, if I can have a beautiful home, oh my gosh, this would be so wonderful. No, you're taking action. Call up a realtor, go see a couple of homes. Go see three, four, five homes, walk through it. See yourself owning that home. That is the action we're talking about. Does that make sense? Now, having said that, so number one is not taking action. Number two, you have limiting beliefs. You have limiting beliefs. What does this mean? It means that in your belief system and the things that you value, there are limitations. These limitations are usually implanted in your subconscious in childhood. Number one limiting belief for a lot of people is feeling unworthy. Literally not believing that you are worthy of the things you say you want. Now, on a conscious level... You think you don't, you don't, you're not aware that you feel you're unworthy, but remember the subconscious runs 90% of our life. The subconscious meaning that part of our mind that stores narratives about ourselves, about our reality, about our world when we are children. So if you grow up and you grow up in a family or in an environment that does not boost your self-confidence, that not, doesn't give you a healthy self-esteem. As you grow older, you're struggling along in life, but there is this story in the back of your mind that is telling you of your unworthiness, that is telling you that you do not deserve certain things. You do not deserve love. You do not deserve money. You do not deserve happiness. You do not deserve peace. This narrative that was laid down in childhood keeps running in your mind and sabotaging any manifestation work that you do. Because on the one hand, you will feel the joy and everything else when you see and you imagine this thing that you want. But then that narrative is so powerful that it kicks in and it starts implanting self-doubt. And it starts implanting, well, you're not worthy of this, really. Well, actually, you know, you don't deserve this. Who do you think you are? But that's because that's the narrative that is 
ingrained. This is why shadow work is important. This is why inner child work is important to go there and retrieve these inner children so that you can rewrite that subconscious narrative that is literally a stumbling block to you achieving the things you want. And sometimes you get so close, you get so close, you can feel it, you can taste it. And then boom, that narrative starts. It's like a stuck record starts playing on a loop. You wake up in the morning, you're great, you're feeling amazing. Midday, oh, that, that, that song starts again. It starts playing on a loop. While it's playing on a loop, your vibrational frequency is lowering, is lowering. And so you were almost there and then it brings you back down. How many people always say to me, Mkulu, I do everything right. I, 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 everything is going well. I'm almost there. Then boom, everything falls apart. A lot of that is because of those subconscious narratives that really sabotage us. And these are the ones that cause these self-limiting beliefs. The other problem with self-limiting beliefs is things like your money story. What is your money story if it's money you're trying to manifest? What is your wealth story? Many people grew up in poverty and scarcity became the narrative. There isn't enough. There isn't enough. And so even when you have money, instead of releasing, because remember, everything is energy, including money. When you hold on too tight to money, what happens? You've got a fist like this holding on to the little you have. It just means no more can pour in. But when you gently hold it, meaning to say you allow room for money to move as an energy in and out, you are open to allowing more to come in. And so you find people who yearn to grow their wealth, but they can't grow their wealth because they're like this. What does that look like in reality? Invest. Invest in yourself. Invest in something. You want to do a podcast? Invest in a microphone. <laughs> Simple things. Instead of saying, oh no, you know what? I, I don't need a microphone. I can keep working as I, if people understand me anyway. You don't have a nice phone. Invest in a camera. Because in the end, that investment will yield more. But if you hold on to the few pennies that you have, you hold on to the few pennies that you have, not much more can come in. Take healthy risks. Healthy risk is what? Start a small business. Take the little that you have, take some of it, start investing in a small business right? But when you have a scarcity mentality, you'd rather see your money sitting in a bank account than to take a calculated risk and see it work for you. So how are you going to grow the wealth? You're going to keep getting that salary. That salary has got to pay X amount of bills. By the time you're done, you've got that little bit left and you're still holding on to it. In order for you to receive something, sometimes you've got to give a little bit, right? You give in order to receive. Every relationship that concerns energy has to be a sort of reciprocal relationship, including your relationship with money. Therefore, you need to look at your money story and see what it is with money that's going on. Here's another example with the money story. Some people grew up in poverty. It affects different people differently. And so they were used to living from hand to mouth. Now watch how tricky the subconscious is. This person starts making six figures and they still find themselves living from hand to mouth. Why? Because the narrative that is running their life around money says we have to live from hand to mouth. Therefore, this person doesn't save. This person gets itchy if there's money sitting in the bank. It's like it must be eaten somehow. It doesn't matter what it does, but it must go. Why? Because the narrative that says we live from hand to mouth is a powerful narrative, right? So you really need to look at your money story. That is some work that you can do with yourself. Get a journal and start talking to yourself about your relationship with money. If you hate money, money will hate you. There's some people who are like, oh, I don't like money. Money is bad. Money, money is not bad. Money is just an energy like any other energy out there. But like with any energy out there, it depends on what you do with that money. 
So a lot of the times you are self-sabotaging because you do not have a healthy relationship with money. You do not have a healthy relationship with this energy. And so if you don't like it, if you hate it, it's not going to come to you. You're going to repel it. Remember that. Right. Now we've spoken a lot about money. What else is a problem with manifestations and why they don't work? You are attached to outcomes. What does this mean? You've come in the presence of these universal principles. You are in the presence of the master magician. You are in the presence of your ancestors. You do this, this manifestation. You do it and you are consistent on it. Your problem is you become attached to the outcome, meaning you want to set a time on it. Remember in the spirit realm, everything collapses into the now. There is no past. There is no future. Everything is in the present. So if you are sitting there and you get it, because everything you do that is not positive lowers your vibration and takes you further and further away from the final outcome. So when you detach yourself from the outcome, when you simply say, I've put it out there, every time you see this SUV as you're driving, you wave at it and you feel joyful. That's all you need to keep doing until, until at the appointed time, it starts to manifest. Now, here's the thing too, attached to outcomes. There are many people who are manifesting money. There is a problem with that by itself, and I'll tell you why. And I always ask uh, some of my mentees this question. If money wasn't an issue, what are the things that you desire? If money wasn't an issue, talk about the things you desire. Many people are tripping themselves up because they say, I want to manifest money so that I can buy a house. Nah. You see, you've attached to an outcome, which is money, not the house. Because the universe can gift you a house if that's what you desire. But now because you've attached money to it, you're attached to that outcome You've literally cut your nose to spite your face because it's very possible that the universe was arranging somebody who would come to you and say, you know what, Mkulu, you're such a great person. I have this home that really I have no need of. I'd like to gift it to you. See, you're busy saying I want money to buy a house. Meanwhile, spirit has already sorted you out. But because of your attachment to the outcome, you miss, your, you, you miss it. You miss that gift totally. So it's very important. Remember, my famous saying is always, do not box spirit. Do not box umoya. Because when you box anything, you hinder the movement, the free flow of that energy. Be awake to surprises. Be open to being surprised by the universe. And the universe will astound you. Right? So, do not get attached to outcomes. Number three, a lot of people actually don't believe manifestation works. So when they're doing it, they're doing it like an experiment. Now, remember what I've said to you about your higher self, which is spirit. Remember what I've said to you about your ancestors who are spirit and these universal principles, which are spirit. They are of the highest intelligence. And so whenever you approach something, without being 200% invested, you've already shot yourself in the foot. Because your higher self is not going to be fooled by your gestures, right? Your higher self is not going to be fooled by you taking a journal and writing things out the way. If your higher self detects that <laughs> you're not in it, and those ancestors of yours are like, yeah, she thinks this is a game. Oh, let's leave her alone. Then you've, you've shot yourself in the foot. So it's not a matter of believing that it works. It's a matter of knowing. We don't deal with beliefs in African spirituality. This is one thing because belief automatically leaves room for doubt. We work with knowledge. And I can tell you from personal experience, this is not theory from a book. Manifestation works. Mm -hmm. 
Manifestation works. I can give you countless examples where it's worked very quickly. And in some cases, you know, it's worked in time, but it works. The key here is knowing that it works. The key is knowing, not believing, knowing that what it is you're out for will happen. Just don't attach a timeline to it, number one. And number two, don't become attached to outcomes that could hinder this manifestation coming through. So, and then the other one is people will say manifestation is selfish. That is one of those limiting self-beliefs. How many people believe that aspiring to a certain level of wealth or aspiring to a certain standard of living is selfish. There are a lot of people who believe that or who, who, who have made that part of their narrative. Sometimes in childhood, the people who are usually struggling with this are firstborn children. And I can speak from experience because I'm an oldest child in my family. Why? Because many of us grew knowing that we always had to give up certain things for our younger siblings to have. How many of you grew in a household where you'd be told, oh, no, you're the older one. Just let the one, younger ones have it. Or time to get Christmas clothes oh, back in the day of that hideous holidays. You know, where you're told, well, there isn't enough money, but you know what? You'll get yours after Christmas, but let the younger ones have. And so the narrative, the way a young brain writes that story is this. I am not to be selfish. And anytime I want something for myself, I am being selfish. Because remember, when you're a child, say you're the oldest, if you do sort of say, well, I also want, you get told, "Ah, uh -uh, you're the older one, stop being selfish. That becomes a story that is written in your subconscious. And what tends to happen with people like that, if they don't do the work to consciously rewrite that, is they are always putting other people before themselves because they have been told that to put themselves first is to be selfish. That can literally sabotage any attempts that you make at manifestation. It can sabotage any attempts you make at happiness because there is a story that says, if you put yourself first, you are selfish. These are the people who become doormats to other people. These are the people who succumb to abuse and take it in the name of being giving or being of service. A lot of work needs to be done around that Bagwantu because there are many of us who grew up in situations where we really, really, uh, yeah, to, to think of yourself was considered selfish. And women tend to fall into this trap a lot because women are supposed to be nurturers. You're supposed to be giving. The minute a woman says, uh-uh, you know what? I need time for me. I need to take care of me. A lot of times she would be labeled as selfish or self-absorbed, right? So work needs to be done around that if your manifestations are going to work, right? The other one is frustration and doubt. <sighs> frustration, frustration. This is when you have expectations of the universe. The only expectation you should have is the knowledge that this thing is going to happen then you won't get frustrated because you're not looking at the clock and saying, oh my God, I've been manifesting this for one year already. Why isn't it happening? Well, once you're in a state of frustration, guess what? You're lowering your vibrational frequency. Once you're in a state of frustration, you're what? You start to doubt. The minute you start to doubt, you're lowering your vibrational frequency. You're moving yourself further back. You're holding yourself further back from that which you want. Does that make sense? So literally manifestation is a consistent, a consistent envisioning, a consistency in the emotions you have around the things you want. Now, here's the kicker, something to keep in mind. If you find that you're manifesting something and then after a while you're really not enthusiastic, well, you never really wanted it anyway. If it's something you deeply desire, Every single time you envision it, every single time you think of it, you're going to get so excited. 
you're going to get like a little child. And that is the frequency you see. The universe, Unom Kubulan, responds to frequency, responds to energy. So when you are consistent in depositing that energy with her, then you know she will work that magic on your behalf. The other one too is lack of clarity. Now, remember I gave you the example of the car and I said, right, you go to a dealership, go to the dealership that sells the SUV you want. You already know the color. You already know this, the interior. Is it leather interiors? Is it vinyl? What color leather? If it's got a sound system, is it a Bose? Is it a Sony? Is it a what, what, right? Listen, down to the detail of the thing that you want, go find it and then put yourself in it. And then don't yo-yo. Don't one day say, nah, you know what? I think I want to, uh, nah, I don't want, nah, I don't want a red one. I think maybe I should have a blue one. If you're not consistent, any inconsistencies, you're just drawing yourself further back and you're just prolonging. And then you're going to get frustrated. Then your vibrational frequency is going to go down and so on. The cycle continues. So keep in mind that when you do manifestation work, don't talk to people about it. That's the other thing. And that's another point is stop talking to people about the things you're manifesting. Hey, Bo. My grandmother always used to say, you don't open the pot until the food is cooked. So it cooks properly. Right? You don't start yap yapping about your manifestations to people because there are so many people out there who don't want you to get the thing that you want. If you're trying to have a child, why are you telling the whole world that you are manifesting a baby? If you want a new home, why are you blasting on the socials that, oh, I'm manifesting a new home, my husband and... Come on. That boastful energy will be the end of you. Stop. Remember you're in the womb. How many people can see a pregnant woman and see what's going on in the womb. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's sacred. It's sacred. That baby is being knitted limb by limb, quietly in the waters, in those primordial waters in the womb. So why on earth do you think as you're knitting this, your baby, you're going to put it out there for the world to see, and it's going to be okay? <laughs> Exercise wisdom, which is another quality of our set, is wisdom. Exercise wisdom. Unless you're manifesting something with someone, say you're manifesting something with your partner. Now, that's a powerful thing because when you're manifesting with someone, you can even use your sexual energy for manifestation. And whoa, that works. If you're manifesting with your partner, your husband or whatever, you can sit together and envision and manifest and speak it into existence together. But if you are manifesting your own personal thing, why? Yo, please don't make me come for y'all. Don't make me come for y'all. You know I'm big on sacredness. That's why many of you know that if you write a dream under a post, I block you. Because why? Because it's sacred. This is a communication between you and your guides. The world does not need to know everything. Now, after it's happened, you can celebrate. You can, I always say to people personally, I don't because that show off your energy can just attract or draw eyes that you don't want anyway. There are people out there who are just not happy to see other people do well. You must know that this is reality. And this is coming from somebody who used to believe in the inherent goodness of everybody. Until I learned the hard way that that was an illusion. So always make sure that you're not out there yap yapping about the thing that you're cooking. Keep the lid on the pot until it's cooked. Right? So. The other things that are sort of bigger picture issues is alignment and timing. 
You know, I started in the beginning talking about timing is everything in the spiritual realm, right? So this season of our set, this is a perfect time to do the inner work of manifestation. This is the perfect time to do inner healing, to work on those self-limiting beliefs, to work on those negative stories that you have around money, to work on those uh, stories that you were told about yourself that literally make you feeling worthless and not deserving. This is that perfect time, right? Timing is everything. Now, when we get to the new year in September, that is when you now get into action. If you have your business plan, you've gone and you've seen, you've envisioned what your business looks like. You've done that groundwork. Now it's time to get into physical action and actually start planting the seeds in spring, September, our new year, new beginnings. That's when that happens. So with everything you do, that's why it's important to understand the calendar, to understand what energy comes with each season. So you're doing the appropriate work and the appropriate actions at that particular time. I'm going to remind you, our set is the season of meditation because she is oxygen. So you can do meditation work while you manifest, while you envision what you want. You're taking deep breaths in, deep breaths out. You're healing yourself as well. And you're making her fully present in your essence, in your being. Does that make sense? So that's number one. Timing is everything. Timing, timing, timing. Always remember that. That is why they scrambled the calendar and gave us a calendar that is fake because they know that once you misalign somebody, they are lost. And Bakwantu, we've been lost for so long because we are using a calendar that has nothing to do with us and celebrating holidays and festivals that do not honor our ancestors, but rather we're giving our energies to entities and, and, and festivals that have nothing to do with us. And then we wonder why those other people seem to keep doing well, seem to get a, keep getting away with the things they get away with. But we are assisting them unknowingly. Being conscious and awakened is knowing that you're going to do things on the timing that works for us as Bagwantu, as a collective. And that is our calendar, right? Okay, number two, you are not letting go. This is a big reason people are not able to manifest. Letting go of what, Mukulu, you ask? Forgiveness is a form of letting go. Unforgiveness will keep you weighted down. Unforgiveness is like drinking poison and hoping that it's going to kill your enemy. That is what unforgiveness does. Unforgiveness has nothing to do with the other person and everything to do with freeing yourself. So letting go, which is why every full moon I put out a letting go ritual, letting go of those things that do not or no longer serve you, letting go of relationships that no longer serve you, letting go of ideas, ideologies, religions, philosophies that no longer serve you, letting go is very important in manifestation work, right? So another one is, I think we've spoken about this, you not being specific enough. Remember I said you have to be specific to the color, to the what, what, to the what you have to, like to the detail. So specificity is very important. Right. Sometimes, um, because we're a spirit having a human experience and we are governed by higher order spirits and we are governed by these our ancestors we live in communion with, Sometimes they have other plans. <laughs> I know, right? After all that, I'm here to tell you that sometimes they have other plans. But do you know what is so beautiful about their other plan? Their other plan is usually way better than the plan you envisage for yourself. Take it from somebody who knows. Sometimes their plan is so much bigger <laughs> than the plan that you had for yourself. Because we have a tendency to think small and play small. You know, your answers are like, ah, uh, you say you want what? A house. But how about I give you a whole complex so that you can be a mogul? 
in property. I'm, I'm literally saying these things because they have happened to certain people I know. Right? You were out to get a house. And your ancestors had a better and a bigger plan. So that is why when you do your manifestations, allow room for spirit to move in there and shift things about for you. And again, do not be attached to the outcome because if you are attached to that outcome, you will actually miss the real thing that you were supposed to be getting from the universe. Does that make sense? Right now, that's it for me. I think I have really said a mouthful. I hope it makes sense. Um, this is the time for that internal work, family. Do that internal work. Do that internal work so that you don't stay left behind. It's going to become increasingly harder and harder to stay in 3D. It really is because what will happen is you will see others moving on and out and you will know that you are stuck because you are stuck. And then you are surrounded by other people who are stuck, including the palm colored ones. And I, if anything should be a motivator for you to do this work is so that you're not left stuck with your colonizer and your enslaver. Refuse, refuse. That must, for me, that is the definition of hell. I don't believe there's a place called hell because there isn't right? But for me, honestly, that would be the definition of hell to be, to stay stuck with them. I'm even heating up thinking about it. Yo, I cannot, I cannot. So I really hope this was useful for you guys. Once again, I am so like enamored with you. I am so deeply grateful for you. Uh, you make this work so beautiful and so joyful for me. And uh, I know I'm not talking to anyone who's putting comments, but y'all know why. Y'all know why. Um, and until I get a camera, this is where I'm going to be recording, guys. So those of you who do subscribe, thank you. You will always get a live from me. I hope that uh, this was worth it. And um, yeah, we will keep having our conversations as we elevate and as we elevate and when we become our true God selves, when we are fully in our power, all of us as a collective. Um, yeah, we're bringing in the new golden age, right? Last golden age was many, many, many thousands of years ago. And guess what? We are the ones we've been waiting for and we are the ones they have been waiting for. So embrace that and run with it. I love you guys so much. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and um, see you on the next upload. <laughs>